Welcome to the Omnia Soul Art Show, the Glitch Art Video Podcast, hosted by Omnia Soul. Episode... Fourteen. Hello and welcome to the Omnia Soul Art Show, also known as Tosis. Welcome. This episode is being released on March 14th. It is the 14th episode, and it is a very special episode because it is Pi Day. So give a big Pi Yay for Pi Day 3.14. We made it all the way to Pi Day, the day before the Ides of March, the day before Julius Caesar was stabbed to death by Brutus and his fellow senators. Give out a very special Pi Yay for Pi Day, and I hope that longtime listeners of the show um, who listened last week when I said, go ahead, get yourself a slice of pie for Pi Day. I hope you listen, because I got my slice. I got a lemon cream pie let's go ahead and give it a taste hmm that is that is some rich pie that is good it um reminds me of kind of like a lemon meringue pie but without the meringue instead of the meringue there's like a layer of cream in between the lemon and uh in between the le- the lemon flavor the lemon filling on top then a layer of cream and then crust and some whipped cream on the top near the back of the crust very delicious and um before we get too far into this episode we're going to go ahead and move before I even talk about what we're glitching tonight, we're going to go ahead and move into our first segment, which of course is... What am I, what am I, what am I, what am I drinking tonight? So tonight, in honor of Pi Day, I am drinking coffee. Black coffee. And usually for, usually longtime listeners of the show will know, I don't really drink coffee that much anymore. I, I have switched to tea either a breakfast time tea with a little bit of with a little bit of sugar in the raw and almond milk or uh, made up the same way but usually a little earl gray tea but in honor of pie day i am drinking coffee black as midnight on a moonless night uh decaf though because i can't have too much caffeine the caffeine and tea seems to affect me differently than the caffeine and coffee, but sometimes the caffeine and coffee is just too much for me. So I I switch to decaf that way. If I drink like three cups of decaf, it's the equivalent of one cup of coffee. A lot easier on my stomach, a lot easier on my mental and physical health. I don't get shaky. Um, Well, that has been what am I, what am I, what am I, what am I drinking tonight? So tonight we are glitching a couple pie related movies, not pie the, the dish, um, but pie 3.14. We are directing, not directing. Why did I say directing? Not, I mean, I guess I do direct the show in a way, um, but we are we are glitching. Uh, the movie Pi, the Darren o- Aronofsky, Faith and Chaos is the tagline on it. Uh, and we are so also glitching The Life of Pi, which is uh, from the visionary director, Ang Lee. Which Ang Lee is a director who is pretty, pretty fucking hit or miss in my opinion. I loved Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Obviously, Brokeback Mountain is a masterpiece, and we'll probably glitch that sometime during Pride, but 
I was not a big fan of Life of Pi when I saw it in theaters. I saw it in 3D. Some of this stuff is pretty interesting. And I, I read the novel, or I read most of the novel as a kid, and I, and I enjoyed it back then. Um, it's hard to make a movie out of. A kid on a boat with a tiger for a really long time, and that's, that's the plot of the movie. That's just my dinner with Andre, but it's my boat ride with a tiger. And at least in my dinner with Andre, they're having interesting conversation about philosophy, existentialism, metaphysics. You can't have that type of fucking conversation with a tiger unless it's a fucking Disney movie where the tiger talks back. But that didn't happen. As far as I remember, that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, so pie, life of pie, on this wonderful pie day. So grab your slice of pie. If you don't have a slice of pie yet, pause the episode, go to the grocery store, get a slice of pie. And we are just bound to have a wonderful pie day together. And this is going to be the most ASMR episode I've ever recorded. Because I wasn't joking around. When I said I was going to eat a slice of pie on air, I wasn't fucking joking. Don't ever think I fucking joke about pie, because I do not. Um, when I bought this pie, I got it. I got it delivered from a grocery store, and on the app that I was using to order it, I didn't know what kind of pie I wanted for pie day, so I went ahead and ordered three different types of pie. I ordered this lemon cream, which I'm eating now. I ordered a fourth of cherry and a fourth of blueberry. And believe it or not, the fourth of the pie was cheaper than this lemon cream. The fourth was about like $4 each. This was like $4.60 something for this slice of pie. I wasn't sure which which pie to go with on this pie day, but I went with the lemon cream. And I I was a little disappointed on the app. I was like, why... Is the lemon so much more expensive Turn for only a slice and not a fourth? Turns out this grocery store slices about a fourth. I don't even think I can finish this whole slice because it's it's about a fourth of pie. Like it's it's a pretty fucking big. It's a little little bit smaller. It's not a quite full fourth, but it's a pretty big slice of pie. So I don't think I'll be eating all of this pie, but I will be enjoying most of it throughout this show with you, the listener at home, and um, send me an email, omniasoulart at gmail.com, or go ahead, comment on the YouTube video, let me know what kind of pie you are eating on this pie day, 3.14, this beautiful Sunday, I don't actually know if it's beautiful Sunday, I'm recording on a Wednesday, uh, I wanted to get everything edited and done and uploaded and ready to go on 3.14 so recording a little bit early so what i might do with the with the extra pie that i have is that when everything is uploaded i can watch the episode and enjoy another slice of pie with myself on the show get a little meta with it become part of the audience and really um Really enjoy this pie day together. I thought about glitching Twin Peaks again. Because there's so many pie references in that beautiful show. But we just glitched Twin Peaks on uh, Perfect Blue Marble. Whatever number episode that was. Was that like 11 or something? 11 or 12. I don't really remember. Anyways, we just glitched Twin Peaks recently. So I didn't want to glitch too much Twin Peaks. So I figured Pi Day, Pi, Life of Pi. Let's get this fucking party started. Happy Pi Day, y'all. All right, we're going to go ahead and play our first song of the night. This is a song by Hedra Rowan. Uh, you can find this album nothing's wrong now you're beside me at bodymilk.bandcamp.com 
And Body Milk is spelled without the vowels, so bdymlk.bandcamp.com. And a little bit about this album, uh, since Hedra is the featured musician of the week. Uh, this, uh, this is a very interesting project because it welcomes Hedra's new voice, and it was a process where uh, it's almost entirely an a cappella album, and every sound on the record, with the exception of one track, was made with either some form of vocal synthesizer or... Um, would it, sorry, my cat distracted me. Or new adaptations of Hedra's original voice. So it's uh, basically an acapella album that's run through different synthesizers to create some very interesting, uh, noisy, experimental music. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I think it's going to go really well with the glitch art. The first song that we are playing tonight is a song titled Aspiration Porn. So I think you'll like it, uh, and we will be back with you after the song. As always, uh, the links to both Body Milk, the band Hedra's Bandcamp, will be in the show notes, as well as I'm going to include the link to Hedra's YouTube channel, so you can go check out some of Hedra's videos, as well as there's at least one music video of one of the songs on the album. So check it out, and we'll be back with you after the song. Uh, uh, Rig. Uh, Bye. 
That was Aspiration Porn by Hedra Rowan off the album uh, Nothing's Wrong, Now You're Beside Me Again. So go check it out, bodymilk.bandcamp.com. Go show Hedra some love. We are going to go ahead and move to the next segment of the show. The Interview. All right, welcome. This is very exciting because this is the first ever interview on the Omnia Soul Art Show, also known as TOSIS. I'm here with my oldest friend, Douglas, and we're here to talk about pie. How are you doing today, Douglas? I'm great. I didn't uh, realize that this was your first interview on the podcast. Yeah. The pressure is on now. Yeah, I'm the pressure is on. But, uh, yeah, yeah so for the, for the most part, I've always just... Uh, just talked i on the twitch show i would sometimes answer calls and i do have a phone number that people can call in so i have like played like voicemails and stuff on the show that's what's up uh and i've done like one like tarot reading on twitch before yeah on the over the phone but yeah i've never interviewed someone but uh i thought this would be fun for pie day yeah um to interview you about pie so what do you remember the first time you ever had pie Whoa. <laughs> I was thinking um, about that because I don't. I, I Pie has been with me so long that I have no idea when the first time I had pie was. No, I don't remember. I mean, I'm going to assume that it was probably at some holiday when I was young. Probably yeah. like a Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Pumpkin. Something like that. Some pumpkin pie. Yeah, I used to really love pumpkin pie when I was a little kid. I know that. So I would assume that it was probably at like... I can't say for sure, but that would be my best guess. Yeah, probably a thanks family Thanksgiving, some pumpkin pie, whipped cream. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, you ever had pumpkin cheesecake? No, I haven't, but that sounds delicious. It's really good, yeah. I, uh, uh, I know that when I was little, I did used to eat pumpkin pie like with my hand, like a slice of pizza. I never wanted to use silverware. I just wanted to pick it up and just eat it. So yeah, it's my preferred way of what uh, pie, I guess. What would you say is your uh, favorite pie? Oh, uh, pecan pie. Yeah. Pecan pie. Oh, oh, it's so good. I love making it, too. Uh, do, how When you make it, do you like... So my dad is super particular about pecan pie because he says that a lot of times they just like... It's a jelly pie with pecans on top. But he likes like... That's got to be in it. Yeah, he it's likes pecans throughout the entire thing. Yeah. Is that how you make it? So, yeah, whenever I make it, I make like the like caramelish chocolatey uh like kind of like he said like jelly stuff or whatever yeah the filling i make the filling but then i combine the pecans in it that's, that's another weird yeah. thing i just I, I don't know why i say pecans but whenever i say pecan pie i say pecan i just i don't know why pecan pie. um but no i always have it like throughout last time i made it actually i accidentally used um whole pecans so it was like a lot of nut to deal with in there yeah but uh it was delicious it sounds good it was i want to try it yeah it's my favorite maybe um, we can make a pie after this yeah maybe we should have pie days tomorrow i got i, so, I bet you i have enough stuff to make it yeah we should make a pie in my house yeah <laughs> you know what that uh is. all right what's uh um i guess pie related questions what what are your thoughts on uh 3.14 I mean, you know, I get that it's Pi Day. Uh, I've never been a big fan of math, though. The same. So yeah. the the number doesn't really appeal that much to me. But uh, the anything to celebrate Pi, I'm all about. Yeah. Because uh, I do prefer pie over cake. And same. Uh, what about uh? How do you feel like uh, pizza pie? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Duh. I mean, uh, yeah. If you don't like pizza pie, then. I don't know, you know, teach their own. What's, what's your favorite kind of pizza pie? Oh, Antonio's Pizza, Springfield, Illinois. It's All the right. greatest pizza in the world. Nice. Um, every time I have to go back, I will, like, 
call Antonio's like 45 minutes before I get into town and like have it ready there for me. Um, sometimes I'll bring it back home up here with me. Uh, what else am I a really? I don't know the last of? time I had Antonio's, but it's so good. Antonio's is um, so good. Have you had? Uh, what's it called tavern style pizza in chicago um not in chicago but uh i have at like blackthorn pizza in st louis i think okay. that's tavern style yeah because that's so from what i have and people probably if I, people don't comment on the show but if they did they might correct me in the comments but I, well from what i've heard tavern style is the real chicago style that's it because the chicago style the big like casserole one yeah is like kind of more touristy i still enjoy it yeah but not a lot of people from chicago eat that a lot of people get tavern style which is like it's like a in between a thin and a thick crust yeah and then yeah it's cut into those squares that sounds wonderful it's really good yeah. i am um, i've had i've had some uh, like a couple places with tavern style in chicago that's really good i know what you mean about like the thick crust one like the really deep dish yeah, yeah and being more of a touristy thing yeah. i like it it's I like, like it's, it. like a, yeah. it's like a treat and every once in a while thing for me but i'm telling you my favorite pizza pie i've found in chicago so far it's seriously like a five minute walk away and it's called Davita's and uh, I walked to it like a month ago when it was s- snowing terribly and it was like yeah. zero degrees and uh, I went in there and I picked it up and then I walked out and somebody came out after came out on the street after me yelling and running after me because they'd given me the wrong pizza. Oh no. And so I went back in, I handed them this pie and they're like, we gave you the wrong one. And then they opened it and they were like, no, no, this is the right one. And I was like, no, it's definitely not. Um, but then I got it and it, they corrected it. What did they and, get? Uh, it had like sausage and onions and some other stuff on it but i was like i only ever order pepperoni and cream peppers so i know that's, uh, not right. that's a good combo but um are you, are you pineapple and pizza fan or no pineapple and pizza i mean it's all right i'm not gonna go out of my way to order it for myself but yeah. if someone else orders it i will have a slice i definitely yes. I, lo- I i i never understood the hate for like pineapple on pizza uh <laughs> yeah i don't know it's good it's, it's like pineapple's so good in like savory dishes like on a burger like grilled pineapple pizza uh those are the two i can think of <laughs> uh, <laughs> i guess yeah. some chicken some pineapple chickens get good. a little bit of sweet in with that yeah salty, exactly I feel you. Uh, um, have you seen the movie pie the darren aronofsky i don't think so no honestly you mentioned the movie pie earlier and then you also mentioned uh life of pie yeah um i don't think i've seen either you one seen of life them by either. no i i like pie a lot i think it's i think it's worth watching life of pie i like better now when i was glitching it and like re-watching it even though the you know the vi- the visuals are all like uh you know psychedelic and everything yeah but the um the story and the dialogue that i could hear i was like oh this is actually like not as bad as i remember because i saw it in 3d and i just remember being like kind of bored because it's like <laughs> It's like a guy on a boat with a tiger. With like. a tiger, but that's it's like cool. it's that's hard to make a movie out of, and like it just they're on the boat the whole time. Not the whole time because it says okay. it says it's like kind of like his whole life. So like because he's like raised in a zoo, uh, like his family. I don't know. We bought a zoo, uh, but they bought a zoo or they just had a zoo. I don't know. But they li- he lived at a zoo and then for some reason he ends up on a boat with the zoo animals and then it ends up being like the tiger because I think the tiger eats some of the other animals if I remember correctly. Pies arc. But it's good. Uh, it's a, like I remember the book being good, but the the movie I was not a huge fan of. But I do like some of Ang Lee's other work. Um, do you like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Did you see that one? Never seen it. I remember really? seeing so many previews for it. We should we watch younger, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. We can watch really that good. tonight. That would yeah. be dope. Yeah. yeah, I would be about that because yeah. I remember seeing previews for it. That one's good. The the Hulk movie that well both Hulk movies kind of sucked, but the one that sucked more the, the original one with uh, the really bad. Why CGI. can't I remember his name? And we're Norton? Not Edward Norton. That's Incredible Hulk. I loved that, that one. Everyone good. everyone yeah. that movie so lot of people, crap. I loved that one. Uh, but I feel like the consensus is that one was better than the one that was just called Hulk, right? Is that Mark Ruffalo? No, Mark Ruffalo's they added in Avengers. The one that was just called Hulk was like way back in the day. I'll show you some previews of it. It was really bad CGI. The only person who I think liked it, obviously Ang Lee because he directed it. I assume he's just didn't like, I hate this movie. But Roger Ebert gave it a really good review because he said that the bad CGI reminded him of the original King Kong movie. 
Yeah. Um, which is, I feel like I could rewatch it and would like it. I'm looking it up right now because I'm like, I have to have seen this. Yeah, we were like kids when it came out. Because I remember seeing it at the Esquire Theater in Springfield. 2000. Shouts out to the Esquire Theater. R.I.P. R.I.P. I I missed that. that. Yeah, dollar theater, dollar movies. Unpie related, but uh, have you ever talked to people from home and they still refer to that theater out on the west side as the new theater? Yeah. Even though that opened up when we were in like middle school. Yeah. But it's still just like, oh, that's the new theater. Yeah, that's the new theater. (laughs) It's been around for like 15 years. Everybody in town knows what you're talking about when you say it, though. Um... Oh, yeah, Jennifer Conley was in this. Yeah, Eric Bana. I did see this. I did like this one, You did one like it? Too. Okay, yeah. I, saw it, I saw it at the Esquire, and I remember not liking it, but I feel like if I watch it now, I'll probably like it now. I, yeah, I enjoyed it. Th- I thought he looked cool jumping. Whenever he Very jumped true. anywhere, that was cool. And that's why the Hulk jumps in the comics is, like, you know, super far like that. But um, the I just remember the CGI being so bad. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. It it takes a lot for me to not like a movie. Yeah, um, you're a real Greg head. I don't know what that means, but sure. You seen on cinema, right? I, not a lot of it. I mean, I know what it is. I'm familiar with it, but I don't know enough to like get references. So I would say the d- dichotomy is. Well, they're both kind of nerdy, but Greg's like a super nerd. Yeah. And like Tim is very much like trying to be cool and like he gets into music and motorcycles and all these like typically like masculine things. But all Greg cares about is watching movies and eating popcorn. And he knows a bunch of useless facts about movies and he collects VHS tapes. Yeah. So I have a lot in common with Greg and I would a bit consider of a Greg myself head. a Greg I, head. I, I yeah. guess I'm a Greg yeah. head. Yeah. yeah. All but I want to do is like, eat mo- watch movies and eat pie. But he, yeah, see, he considers himself a film buff and an expert, but he loves every movie, like, unconditionally. So he's, like, bad at reviewing movies because every movie gets five bags of popcorn. Yeah, I'd probably give everything five bags of yeah. popcorn. Yeah, I'm five slices of pie. Yeah. Um, real talk, though, back to back to pie, I am kind of curious because uh, you asked me, what's your favorite kind of pie? I just kind of need to know now. That's a really good question. Um very difficult question. I pecan, used to be pecan, very pecan, pies, into, pecan pies definitely up there. Up there. I used to be um, very into French silk when I was a little too. Anytime my family went to Baker's Square, that's what I, I would get at Baker's Square French. too. I feel like chocolate pie is such a good kids pie. Have you ever had chocolate meringue? Yeah, I've made a chocolate like meringue. Yeah, before. chocolate meringue is really good. I think pecan or lemon meringue might be my favorite. I was actually eating, and earlier in this episode, I was eating a lemon cream pie. That sounds delicious. Um, it was really good. Uh, I don't know, classic cherry, but I wouldn't say that's my... That was my grandfather's favorite. Yeah. I wouldn't say that's my favorite. Blueberry is really good. It's really good. Pumpkin, but, like, I don't eat pumpkin outside of, like, Thanksgiving and, like, maybe Christmas. That's fair. Um, I don't know why. I feel like you can... I mean, it's a seasonal thing, but I feel like a lot of people make it with canned pumpkin. You get a pumpkin pie whenever you want. All right. We will be right back with... The Interview. But we are going to go ahead and play our next song. This is another song by Hedra Rowan off the album uh, Nothing's Wrong, Now You're Beside Me Again. And the song is called Noise Becomes Female. So go check out Hedra's music, bodymilk.bandcamp.com, and we will be back with you after the song. Thank you. 
All right. That was Noise Becomes Female by Hedra Rowan. And now we are going right back into the interview with Douglas. Here's another question for you from a movie that I just watched the other day. They were talking about Cobbler, and at one point, John C. Riley's character in this movie said, Is a cobbler a pie? What do you think? No, but they're related. Yeah. And you could turn up you could turn a peach pie into a peach cobbler if you wanted to. I would because you could just mash it up, right? I would agree with that. Yeah. And what? Uh, did Did John C. Riley believe a cobbler is a pie? I think he was just. It was like I can't remember what the movie was called, but he was just trying to make conversation. And um, I think his, the lady who played his wife in that movie was just like. It's not a pie because there's no bottom crust. And I was like, that makes sense. That does make sense. And so like, a pie is that needs what, a bottom crust. Is that what defines a pie? The yeah, well, that's crust? why a pizza pie has a bottom crust. A pizza pie. Yeah. But um, I just I, I have been and thinking about that for a couple days. So. What if a cobbler didn't have? If a cobbler didn't have a bottom crust but was in a circle, it would still be closer to a cake, right? Because cakes can be in a circle, but they're not, a cake is not a pie, but that doesn't have bottom crust. And cake, and, is oh, a cake all crust? <laughs> maybe, yeah, because it's more like... It could be, because if, like, a pie is definitely the crust and then a filling. Yeah. is what Because you can't just eat crust and be like, I'm eating a crust pie. Yeah. Have you, have you uh, had... I've never had this, but I saw this on TikTok... Uh, apparently it's a southern thing that started in the Great Depression. The sugar pie thing is that yeah, what sugar that? pie, oh, water no. pie, water pie. That's what it is. Water, yeah, pie. water pie. No, I haven't, the, but I've seen things yeah, about it too, the, and I want to. Make I want to try it. I think it'd be good. Yeah. The first time I saw it was someone was making a sprite pie. And they it was basically the same thing, but instead of like just water, they used a can of Sprite. That would be good. I'm... And yeah, because it'd be like sugary with like sugary, a lemon lime, kind of fruity, kind of gelatin. But yeah, it's just like sugar and it's water. Like sugar and water and butter. I think that's butter, all they yeah. had in there. Yeah, it's, remember, it'd probably be good. Yeah, I remember seeing like hearing the term water pie and thinking just like, what is that? Yeah, like, checking it out and I was like, that could be all right. I'd like to try it. Uh, and my, so my mom's family is Dutch, and well, you knew that, but for the for the people <laughs> listening, my mom's family is Dutch. But um, so Christmas time we have like a couple. Uh, pastries that are known for like christmas one is called bonquette which i guess in dutch is like just means like baked good because okay. when my parents were in the netherlands they saw a store that said bonquette on it and they were like whoa a bonquette store but they went in and it was just like a bakery just all variety <laughs> yeah like pastries. all a bunch of desserts but it's like a it's like a very flaky pastry with like almond filling is it like a kringle I don't know what a Kringle is. Kringle, that's the pa- the the state pastry of Wisconsin. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. My mom's always loved Kringle, and she's always gets excited and brings them back from Wisconsin. Nice. Next time, when things are normal again, if we can take a trip up to Wisconsin because it's not far away, yeah, we can get some Kringle. That sounds fun. We should and do that. Some cheese. Yeah, and some. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I would be. I would be more than down. Yeah, Kringle. But I love Wisconsin. Does the one you're talking about, the banquette, does it come in like a circle? This is and... that. So this comes in rolls, mm. but in the Netherlands. Some Sometimes people make it in the letter of whoever's name it is and gives oh. it as a gift. Um, but yeah, this yeah this is like it's like a roll. It's like very flaky, almost like croissant top, and then like the middle is like this like almond paste. Sounds good. Um, the other one that they make, it's uh it's called Jan Hegel. It's a shortbread cookie, and it's like so few ingredients. It reminds me of the water pie, but no like gelatin. But it's literally just like butter, sugar, almonds. And I think maybe like flour, but nothing in it to make it like rise. So it's like shortbread, but it's like, because it's like all that stuff together, it's so like dense and flavorful. Like it's really rich and buttery. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're really good. Hungry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We should make a pie. Also, what do you want for dinner tonight? I have to make a pie. It's gonna, it's gonna have to be pie related. It's gonna have to probably going to be pizza pie. Pizza. I'm known for pizza. I'm going to make you try DeVita's now because it's my favorite. Yeah. You can walk over there and get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they'll give you a free bottle of RC. Oh, that shouts yeah. out to you know it's a you know it's a good Chicago place if they give you RC. Yeah, that's a that's other thing I've learned. They uh, yeah they they gave it to me for free the first time I ordered and I was like I didn't order this and they were just like no it comes with it and I was like yeah that's, that's tight. Okay. okay so I think that might how do they cut their pizza? 
squares. Okay, then I think it is tavern style because that's does it come in a box that's just a generic like Italy? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tavern style. That's the, the real Chicago is it? style it's pizza. It's yeah. so good, and it is reminds it? me kind of Antonio's a little yeah. bit, but a little different, and that's yeah. what I love about it. Yeah, because that's that's how I found out about it was actually through a TikTok. Was like so good. was like this is the real Chicago style pizza, and showed like that box, and they're like it's thin crust, like tavern style thin crust, square cut. And then they're like, and it comes with a certain type of soda. Name that in the comments. And then I went to the comments, and every single comment was like, Royal Crown, oh, Royal RC. Crown, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that's good. And um, just on the on the note of other favorite pizza places, I know we talked about that earlier. I also want to give a quick shout out to Pizza A Go Go in St. Louis. Their pizza pie is wonderful. I never had Pizza A Go Go. Where was that at, St. Louis? I'm going to be honest. I still am really bad about the neighborhood names from down there, even though I lived there for five years. Yeah. <laughs> So I couldn't tell you. What exactly was it where close it was to? Um, I was in like the middle of some neighborhood. To be honest with you, oh, okay. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look it up in a. I was in a not second, a fan of. But, uh, I hope people, if anyone from St. Louis is watching this, I hope they don't take offense. But I was not a fan of Emos. I mean, you know, I could like. Uh, their cheese, the Provel cheese, to me, just tasted like plastic. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's, you know, that's how it always is with the Provel is, like, some people love it, some people hate it. Yeah. I was always just kind of like, it's all right. I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. Yeah, I, I, know, I would not go out of my way, but I did. I, I wouldn't refuse it either. I don't think I'd ever refuse pizza. It was near Lindenwood Park in Clifton Heights. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm just like, I know nothing that's around here. But look at that description. Pizza a go-go. Unfussy joint for thin crust pies oh, oh that's yeah. great yeah it's in the name pizza it's in the name yeah yeah pizza go go is great but um have you ever made your own pie like have you ever made pies i have not i should try it i think i think i like baking more than cooking oh i 100 percent agree with that baking is fun i love yeah. baking i made uh since i couldn't go down for thanksgiving because of the pandemic yeah i like made corn souffle for the first time which nice. is one of my mom's dishes nice. and oh yeah we talked about because you made it like a full thanksgiving yeah like a, then, mini- uh, a miniature one but yeah, like i had one. all yeah. of the dishes that's yeah. awesome yeah i only made like one dish but i was like i have to have it and um i yeah it was it was like it was easier than i thought it was gonna be it was delicious yeah but yeah it's kind of like a soft cornbread thing but yeah so you've made the pecan pie have you made any other pies oh i've made so many kinds of pie yeah. really what's your favorite yeah. to make I mean, still the pecan pie, yeah, it's fun, but my favorite thing to do when making pies is, um, excuse me, is, like, uh, making, like, that lattice crust, where it's, like, you make the strips of crust, and then you kind of have to oh, like, yeah. pull them and weave them into each other. It's, like, I don't know, it was really difficult for me. Yeah. The more you do it, the more you get the hang of it. Nice. Um, I really like making pecan pie. I made, like, a... Uh, a uh, peach and apple pie with cinnamon in it once. That was really good. I've made a lot of strawberry rhubarb pies. Yeah. Uh, for I, One of my bosses really loved strawberry or just loved rhubarb pie. And so yeah. I was like, I'm going to make you one. And uh, he did not believe that I made it when I brought it. Really? You thought work. he bought it from He was just like, you did not make this. And I was just like, yes, I did. 100%. That is all me. Yeah. And uh, he had like half the pie that day. And I was just like, yeah. I should have you make a, uh, a regular rhubarb pie for my dad sometime. Oh, rhubarb pie is great. Yeah, because he, he's not a fan of the, uh, he thinks strawberry rhubarb is too sweet. Too sweet. Yeah. But um, what else I make? I made key lime pie before. Oh, nice. Uh, that was really great. Um, I made all kinds of pies. Yeah, just mixed berry ones. I made uh, I made people like pies for their birthdays before because again, I like pie more than cake. So yeah, I also it's also just kind of fun if you do make a pie just yeah. to show up somewhere with it and just be like, I made this. Totally. This is it. Absolutely. I like to uh, if I'm not doing the lattice crust thing, I like to make one solid crust and then like cut out letters mm. in the dough and then put them on top of the crust so that oh, they nice. uh, so that they say things yeah um like if it is for someone's birthday like spell their name out on top of it totally. that's cool but i love making pie yeah yeah this is a, this is a good pie day interview do you have anything you want to say to the listeners before we sign off uh, on this pie day interview nothing in particular i want to say to the listeners just uh you know, thanks for being listeners, and uh, thanks for having me on the podcast here. Honored yeah. to be the first interview. Absolutely. Hopefully, it's not the last time I get to interview. Yeah, totally. And, we'll uh, have you on the show. Maybe if we get the uh, after we're all vaccinated, 
Are you gonna do end up doing one more hot dog eating contest? No, it's done. It's done. Oh, okay. It's done. I was gonna say maybe we could record a podcast about that, but it's done, folks. Dog and it Doug's Dog and it Douglas's is done. It's over. The uh, the pandemic COVID nineteen canceled it. Canceled. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, y'all. Goodbye. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that exclusive interview. I am really hoping to do more interviews in the future, so be on the lookout for that. But uh, until then, we will we will be back. We will be back next week. Uh, so stay tuned, like, and subscribe on YouTube. Go ahead, if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash omniasoulart. And I also got a website, omniasoul.art. So check it out. Uh, support the show. Thank you for watching. And we will be back next week. Thank you to Hedger Rowan for the awesome music. Thank you to Douglas for the awesome interview. And have a happy pie day, everyone. All right, goodbye. Oh, one thing before I sign off completely. Some of the footage in the credits, because I ran out. I had to do so much editing on this last episode. Because I had a lot of glare on the screen that I had to cut out. Whatever, long story short. Some of the footage in these credits is, uh, you might recognize it because it was from a day I filmed for my music video movies, which is now available on YouTube. So a little teaser for you to go. If you like the visuals, when it gets really colorful in the end credits, go, uh, watch the video for movies. Go watch. It's on my YouTube. You'll be able to find it. So go watch it if you like the the end credits and we'll see you next week. All right, bye.